Champagne Gang, Fizz Fam, Confidants. <laughs> Welcome to the Chalet for Sip, Savor, and Spill. If this is your first time here, hi, I'm the Empress. Welcome. Come on in. You are joining me in the Champagne City for grown discussions and bubbly banter. Over here, we give classy with a twist, huh? A little clink with chaos with a side of charm. So if you're ready to sip, savor, and spill, baby, grab your favorite glass of bubbly, grab one of those chase lounges, kick your feet up, say hi to a few people, and come on in. So now, I need y'all to scoot up for a second because we need to really have a conversation about this one. Because what the hell is going on with our young women? What, what is really going on? It seems like they all either want to be hoes or gangsters, one or the other. Or they want to date gangsters, which they don't realize makes them subject to the consequences of what they're attracted to. So we're going to get right into it because I want to know your opinions on this one. So y'all go ahead and light those comments up so we can chat. But first, take those glasses and raise them high in the air. Let's get this dose of empowerment in because we're going to need it for this conversation. Those glasses in the air. There is an unparalleled power in embracing your true self. Your authenticity is your greatest strength. A unique blend of experiences, perspectives, and passions that no one can replicate. In a world that often pressures us to conform, standing firm in who you are is an act of courage. When you honor your authenticity, you give others permission to do the same. Your light shines brightest when you are unapologetically you, attracting the people, the opportunities, and the experiences that are meant just for you. Repeat after me. I embrace my authenticity with pride. I am confident, unique, and perfectly designed to fulfill my purpose. Let's toast. So for today's conversation, we are using two cases which have been going viral lately. Tan to God, y'all gonna get enough of naming yourself God. There's only one God. Said what I said, won't take it back. And Nene Brooks. One of these girls are no longer here and the other is on the verge of being flewed out the wrong way. All because they want to play a game they're not equipped to play. If you can't swim, you don't dive in the ocean. If you can't rock climb, you don't take on Mount Everest. And if you're not street, you don't talk street-ish because you have to answer to the street for the street. If you play street games, you win street prizes. But this is what this younger generation doesn't understand. But when did women start wanting to be so street? There's a difference between being hood and street. Let's say that first. I'm hood. Don't let the voice fool you. (laughs) I grew up in the hood. I had to learn to protect myself. I never liked guns, but I definitely had an offense for blade. I have six swords and probably about 15 knives. <laughs> Don't play with it. Have I ever used one on someone? No, never had to because I never walked around like I was the biggest, baddest thing in the hood. I never walked around like I wanted to challenge the street. I've always been a peacemaker. That's why I don't tolerate negativity and hate in this space over here. I've always been an encourager and an empowerer. I was a church girl, but I've also stared down the barrel of a gun. I've also had to protect my daughter against three ninjas who kicked in my door looking for her and had to tell them, if you want her, baby, you gotta go through me. But that was because my daughter was street. From 15 until she had my grandson in her 20s, just fight after fight after fight. Street shit after street shit after street shit. Dealing with the police. (laughs) Y'all, that's a whole nother story. And I really didn't get it because I brought my children up in church. I didn't let them spend the night at other kids' houses because I had to protect mine. And I saw the world was shifting. The times of falling asleep with your door open, baby, that was gone. Kids being able to stay outside late, gone. Kids being able to play at the neighborhood park, disappearing. So I had to protect mine. I was extremely protective. And she still ended up in the street. I had a police officer tell me once, this city is no longer a safe place for young people to grow up in because you have more bad kids turning good kids bad than you have good kids turning bad kids good. But when did this happen? When did girls want to be thugs? 
When did street life become appealing to young black women to the point the girls wanted to be married to the streets like the boys were? When? And more importantly than that, how? Do we not understand how the enemy works? Women are nurturers. They are birthers. They give birth to future generations. So if the enemy can take out our young women, he stops future generations from coming from her womb. And if she gives birth and she's in the street, then you're giving birth to the street and the cycle continues. Then you raise kids like Lil RT who raps about a life they aren't even old enough to experience yet. What does a 10 year old know about blickies and blasting and AK? Something about half the size as you. But this is what he raps about and we're okay with it. Young girls talking about pulling capers and we're cool with it. And then when the street pulls up on the block to make you put your money where your mouth is, you realize your mouth wrote a check that your ass can't cash, but it's too late. I mean, if we gonna talk about it, let's talk. Scoot up. Now you want to backpedal and it was just music. Nothing is just music. When are we going to get that? I watched a video back in the day of these gangsters and they were talking about the act of unaliving people. And this guy said, no one in their right mind in good conscience can walk up to another person and pull the trigger. He said, it's a certain kind of music that we listen to when we need to go do something stupid. You know what I mean? And when we hear it, it triggers something in us to make us feel like we can do anything. And I can agree with him because remember, I'm not street, but I used to love some gangsters gangster music though. I would hear Scarface, No Tears, baby, it would make me feel invincible. Now the funeral rule is over, and all the tears are dried up, niggas hanging deep on the cut, getting fired up, looking for the nigga who pulled a pistol on my homie, and eye for an eye, son, now your life is what you owe me. What? Come on now. Look, I felt like if a ninja tried me in that moment, baby, it was gonna be that's right trouble <laughs> for real because music does something to you now i wasn't gonna go out my house looking for trouble but in my house if somebody would have ran up just call me seal team six baby call me the blade runner <laughs> because i was gonna put them blades to work but see, the more and more you listen to that music, the more it becomes imprinted on you. And people start to feel like they can act it out. Not knowing that most people singing about that life really ain't about that life. It's no longer about art imitating life. Now it's life imitating art. A person who's truly about that life doesn't need an entourage. Where do you think they got the saying from? Real G's move in silence. Because they let their moves make noise. They weren't doing all this talking, telling you about how they moving in the music, on social media. Y'all talk too much about a life you couldn't even handle if that life came and stood you eye to eye and stared you in the face and said, what's up? Half of y'all would cower in the corner. Half of y'all are just like the song say, you got a mirror in your pocket and you practice looking hard. Mothers used to raise their girls to be young, respectable ladies. Cover yourself up. Men are hunters. When you take the hunt away, they're going to go for what is presented. So if all you're showing is sex, then that's all they're going to go for. Keep your treasure box locked, sugar. Everybody shouldn't have access to your treasure box. Carry yourself as a lady. When you got older, you was told that a man really wants a freak in the sheets and a lady in the street. Now, they want a gangster bitch. They want to ride or die. And I refuse to be a statistic on purpose by accident because your life decisions put my life at risk or cost me my freedom. So I never dated a dealer. Never dated a street ninja. Never. Because I understood, even as a young girl, that if his lifestyle caught up with him and I'm with him, they would do something to me to get back at him. And I refuse to be like Willie D, paranoid, looking over my shoulder and peeping round corners. Because my mind's playing tricks on me. No, but for these girls, it's like a thrill ride at an amusement park for them. They want a bad boy. And worse than that, they want to prove they can do the same thing a man can. I don't know where y'all got this shit from. I can rap like that too. But can you back it up? When that heat comes knocking at your door, are you prepared to handle it? Are you equipped to handle it? Because the street no longer cares that you a girl. Because you stepped into the arena. You stepped on their turf. Now you have young women setting men up. The new term, backdooring them. Do they honestly think these men care that you're not like that for real? 
You hot stepped into the fire. You twerked into the flame. You didn't think you was going to get burned? Or somehow you didn't think it could happen to you because you think the hood got your back. You don't even have your head on the swivel because you have to watch in all directions when you bought that life. You have to have a backup plan for the backup plan in case the backup plan to the backup plan goes wrong. Holla if you hear me. You have to pay attention to the actions and behaviors of those around you and even those close to you because these days almost anybody can be bought because there's no honor amongst thieves. There's no loyalty when I want what you got and I see you getting it. Come on now. But we're about to get into these two stories because I'm getting mad. I'm getting mad that so many of these young girls are dying senselessly because they want to play a game they're not even equipped to play. How do you step into a war and you don't know the rules of engagement? You don't even know where to look for trouble. You don't know how to spot trouble. How you going to spot a wolf dressed as a sheep when you're not a wolf? But we're going to get into these two stories of these two girls who decided to play with the street. First one we're going to check out is the story of Tan the God who lost her life playing street games. Check out these videos. Smoking on my ex, that relationship is dead. I don't never feel the shade, but I see bitches got a shed. I ain't worried about my ex. I put that pussy on his head. That's the thing. <laughs> that's, the, that's the thing. Like, dead ass nigga, like, you're dead. Like, dead. That shit dead as fuck. Dead. What the fuck? This ain't the album cover, right? Ex Woodpack? Oh, hell. Nah, no way. Yo, chat, no fucking way. Ain't no way. You gotta take him out. You gotta take him out. And it just is what it is. Like, if you, if somebody make an attempt on your life, you gotta go. <laughs> you. You got to go, especially if you got the audacity to threaten them. What? This is the story of Tanda God, age 27, a local rapper out of Oakland, California, who was shot and killed during a meet and greet event at her grand opening ceremony of her new beauty supply store. We here. I got Granny in the cut. No play with it. We outside, man. I'm gonna come pull up. Go, okay, Granny. Don't play with the speed. I have not, I was in the bathroom when they started shooting, so I really don't know what was going on. This is crazy though, y'all. But you want to know what's even crazy? The story gets deep after finding out that Tanda God also shot and killed her ex-boyfriend, then rapping and dissing about how she smoked him in her song. She went ahead to make some not-so-nice interviews, posting crazy pictures of him after he died which most likely was why someone waited for her many months later before shooting and killing her for what she did to her ex-boyfriend. Right, what's your girl sound like, bro? <laughs> Kayla, what's your girl sound like, bro? <laughs> Abby, what y'all sit here for? <laughs> if I sit like, boom, 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 boom. Hello and welcome to Twisted Crimes. Subscribe and hit the like button for more stories. This story will be taking us to Oakland, California. Oakland is the largest city in the East Bay, the third largest in the entirety of the Bay Area, and the eighth largest in California. With a crime rate of 81 per 1,000 residents, Oakland has one of the highest crime rates in America compared to all communities of all sizes. You, um, I mean, you've, you've been doing well so far with not putting out like a crazy amount of music. You've done over 100,000 views. Um, talk about that, because people can't even break a thousand these days when they're upcoming. Oh, mamas. I remember them days, too. <laughs> <laughs> what you talking about? Came a long way from a thousand views. <laughs> um, at least, I, when I first was rapping, at least I, a, a young nigga like me got a thousand. <laughs> How long you been rapping for? I say, again, this is my, like, favorite slogan. I fell off the pussy rapping, but... <laughs> Literally, with the mic and shit, like, damn there, niggas should have had me ready with the MC, with the shit going, like, I, I should have been with the golden mic, you hear me? Like, soon as I the pussy, like, here you go. When did you get into a studio, start actually recording and putting the music out? I say, like, seriously, three years ago, like, I went in and out of... Lalique Westbrook, age 27, also known as Tan to God, grew up in Oakland, California. She had a rough time growing up. Tan met a young man named Lamar when she was just 17. Lamar started dating her and he became really abusive to her. Lamar ended up telling her that if she left her, she and her family will be killed. During one of the usual argument, she feared for her life and ended up shooting Lamar dead. Tan pleaded no contest and was released from jail for time served after a couple of months. 
Tan did not relent, she went online to make this post saying, you really got to keep your hands to yourself like Krizian said bro. And instead of calling them people, I blew that, so dash the police. How y'all okay with AM playing crazy but when we fight back we facing time. I can't beat a man up so I did what I know best. Obviously that did not sit well with a lot of people. This is where things got interesting, Tan was a rapper, after getting out, she decided to channel her energy into her rap music. The deal is Tan and God and it's my back of the class freestyle, you hear me? I took a different route and now I'm in the league. I died the Hellcat, Tesla got different feet. I've been a big dog, Red Clipper, man, I'm a different breed. A snake can only shed, but play her stations when they in the need. Crabs in the bucket, man, fuck it, I'ma take them out. They gon' try to clear me if they see what's in my bank account. Count just told me I got more money than the bank account. If we go to war and I deploy them, we gon' clear them out. Get me crabs out, and I'm desperate for greatness. If they hate me right now, they gon' hate when I'm famous. I'm at the point in my life. Everybody can't make it, so I start cutting off time. Everybody be playing. She made a song about her ex, she dissed him and also rapped about how she smoked him. It got worse when she made her album cover which showed her ex's head smoking while she was standing behind him. She named it X Would Pack. It went viral and she made interviews about the whole scenario. Are we, are we supposed to talk about this? Is this like some <laughs> like conversation we're supposed to be having? Okay, what the hell happened? Like, what is that? Like, why? <laughs> I'm pretty sure that means if I break it down that you smoked your ex, which means that he doesn't exist right now. Long as a bitch got legs, I stand on everything I said. I be smoking on my ex. That relationship is dead. Mm. I don't never feel the shade, but I see bitches got a shed. I ain't worried about my ex. I put that pussy on his head. That's the thing. <laughs> that's the that's the thing. Like dead ass nigga. Like you're dead. Like. Dead, that shit dead as fuck. Dead. Are we talking about like literally? Or are we talking figuratively? I don't know what the hell's going on right now. <laughs> are we, are we, are, are, <clears throat> Laura did tell me not to talk about it. Okay, you shouldn't talk about things like that. I'm but talking. fuck them. We rich. <laughs> okay. Lose their life or men. What if I were to tell you that women are getting killed now as rappers in Oakland? Oh, Oakland? Oakland? Rewind! <laughs> And that brings me to today, Aliana Green, AKA Tan the God. Now this was the female rapper who went viral when allegedly there was a story that she killed her boyfriend who was being violent. Now allegedly the boyfriend was beating on her. She took out the strap. Allegedly there were stories of her being in witness protection and all that, but she decided to come out of witness protection. She went to a beauty store event, and unfortunately this happened. An East Bay rapper killed over the weekend, and her friends say she was shot while attending an event at a beauty shop in Oakland. New at 6, KTV's Crystal Bailey joins us now with more details on her life and what led up to that shooting. Crystal? Well, the victim is known as Tan God, a rapper with more than 20,000 followers on Instagram and a bright future ahead of her. According to the people who knew her, they say the young entrepreneur and music artist was passionate about her music, and they never saw this coming. Coming. A woman shot dead in broad daylight. Yeah, everybody like talked and like hide behind the cars and stuff. It was supposed to be a celebration. Glamour Beauty Supply on Telegraph in Oakland was hosting a grand opening on Saturday. The historic beauty shop closed back in May but was under new ownership. Friends identified the woman killed as Aliana Green, known as Oakland rapper Tanda God. The new owner of the shop, who declined an interview, says he invited the well-known Oakland rapper to the event because she was a supporter of black-owned business. This is video from her Instagram. She was promoting the grand opening and having a meet and greet with fans. She was performing there and this guy with the hoodie just walks in through that gate and just started shooting. And I hear some shots, right? So the shots I thought was just part of the, like the music, the performance, and then I heard like three really loud shots. Vincent, who works the donut shop next door, says people came into his shop for cover from the gunfire. Police are tight-lipped about what led to the shooting, but friends of the rapper, who were too scared to speak on camera, tell us they think she was targeted, and witnesses agree. He was targeting her only, because I, I saw it, like, he wasn't like, 
shooting at like everybody. He he was just shooting at her. Yeah, I think the rapper was like screaming, "I'm hit! I'm hit!" And um, she was just laying on the ground until the medics came. Police say a second person was also shot but survived. A friend of the rapper, Ernest Holloway, who's seen here in this video with her, says she will be missed in the local music community. Community. About nine months ago, I made a report on a female rapper. She went viral on my page. Her name was Tan the Guy. Now Tan the Guy went viral because her boyfriend was putting his hands on her, and instead of going to the police, Tan the Guy up the strap, cocked it back, and blocked blasted her boyfriend to smithereens pretty much sent them to the afterlife right so that caused her to go viral because after that she ended up doubling back making a whole mixtape around pretty much unaliving her boyfriend and she actually made a mixtape called x backwood where there's a picture of them two together on the mixtape but his head is literally a backwood so she's literally like smoking on him right that's the that's the thing like they like you did like Dead. Uh, dead. Are we talking about like literally or are we talking figuratively? I don't know what the hell's going on right now. <laughs> are we, are we, uh, <clears throat> Laura did tell me not to talk about it. Okay, you shouldn't talk about things like that. I'm but sometimes you really don't have a choice. Like, I know females that never had a choice and they was just dude popping up and threatening the whole family. And mm. You threatening my people? Everybody mm. gonna die. Oh, is we? <laughs> you gotta take them out. You gotta take them out. And it just is what it is. Like, if you, if somebody make an attempt on your life or even make any weird, threatening weirdo, weirdo. One thing that I do have to ask is, like, how are you not afraid of, like, police or, like, or did, did they, like, side with you on it? Or, like, how did you evade, like, any type of, like, consequence, basically? We gonna find that out on September 23rd. Anyways, now, after that happened, she went viral. You fast forward nine to ten months later, and unfortunately, Tan the God has now been killed. Now, of course, a lot of people are saying that this could very well potentially be some sort of karma uh, or get back. You know how it goes to spin back the cycle, how it's continue, continue, continue. You unlock up them, they unlock you, then the crews just go back and forth. Well, this definitely could be some type of retaliation for her unaliving him, but also there's a chance that it could be just for some other stuff as well, right? Now, she was unalive at her meet and greet inside of Oakland. I'm actually going to read something from her niece that her niece actually wrote on uh, on on. on X Twitter, right? She said, my aunt was shot and killed in Oakland yesterday at her own meet and greet. I want to know who did it. Probably not going to find out who did it unless 12 do some type of ballistic evidence or evidence or something like that because you already know how it goes, especially out in Oakland. They probably living by the code and ain't about to do no snitching and telling. But anyway, this says, if you have any info, hit me. I'm devastated and just want to know what happened. Long live Tanda Guy. You was too cool for this world and I'm going to keep it going for you. So, um, like I say, man, a lot of people that I posted on my Instagram at Key Talk Media. If y'all don't follow my Instagram at Key Talk Media, y'all definitely should get over there because that's where I put everything before I put all this stuff at, right? Well, anyways, I posted it on my Instagram, and of course, a lot of people was like, dang, I was expecting this to happen. Dang, y'all talking about I knew this was actually going to come just based off the fact that she went around and did a whole tour of interviews uh, pretty much speaking about how she unalived her boyfriend, right? And I'm pretty, pretty much she turned his death into a marketing tool, a marketing marketing scheme which did really well she went viral on a lot of blog a lot of blogs blogs and just pretty much all over right now since then things had calmed down for her uh and she was just doing her thing like i said she was doing a meeting greet so obviously she still had potential steam and was going but inside of oakland they did run up on her and pretty much they shot her right so as more details coming about this of course i will keep y'all updated but i did just want to put a closing to the story of tan the guy because we did officially a report when she first was started going viral and unfortunately that viral moment could be the very reason why now she's on a lie she said she making family mad bro so she put her ex on a pack you should have never played with me because then i gotta take it to the third degree you know like so when i bring when i look at this little tombstone i'll be like man it's like it's crazy so september 23rd is like the day I dropped ponds and top, you know what I'm saying? So I had to put that on there. Well, not nah, really. Really, it's three years ago I dropped ponds and top. It's like the anniversary, and they, it, I just happened to have court on this. Everything just came together. I got this to be extra fucking childish, making families mad. And oh well, because they ain't gonna do shit about it.
Smoking mm-hmm. on that axe wood pack. Oh yeah, you know it. Matter of fact, I got the smoke on this dead motherfucker as we speak. Hold up. <laughs> you should have. You should have. Like, this is why I believe social media has drove people insane. Watch this video in real life and then put them on a pack for promotion to sell. If this ain't the most demonic shit I done ever seen, bro. Like, but I get it. People want to get their face out there anyway. But how you did it, you going to reap what you sow. And that's what everything, the good things of life and the bad things. You glorifying it like, what pattern has that ever worked for anybody? What made you think that was the path for you? You know what it was? She was a hurt soul. She couldn't stomach it. People that usually do stuff like that, they can't stomach it, bro. What they did. Hold up, so let me get this right. So this chick was in an abusive relationship. Gets into it with her abuser, who is now her deceased ex, and she chipped him. She's claiming self-defense, but they saying he got shot in the back. She goes to court for a couple years. She pleads no context to one of the charges leading to her early release. All the time, she playing the victim. She's a scared little victim. woo de woo They put her in witness protection. This nigga gets out of witness protection, puts the platinum blonde wig on, and proceeds to create a rap career out of chipping her ex-boyfriend. I don't know what you niggas is going through, but stop getting high putting that platinum blonde wig on and doing these interviews on the internet. Because y'all are down there writing your own little ticket to hell, bro. I swear to God. In her case, I believe she was opening a beauty salon. And I guess she still lives somewhere close in the city where the relatives of the ex is still at. Because there were some young niggas out there with ski masks on and they were there. And they ran into the salon and chipped her shit. What? What was she thinking? So, like, I don't think it's a good idea to taunt chipping some people's family members, bro. That that shit ain't never been a motherfucker move. That shit is disrespectful. And you motherfuckers that do it, what be going through your brains? In her case, she had the platinum blind on. I don't. What the fuck was you thinking? Was you not thinking, hey, I still live in this city, they might blitz me, these young niggas be tripping. What, what the fuck? And it got up the strap, cocked it back, and blasted her boyfriend to smither. I was friends with Tanda God slash Allie, and I want to let everyone know that she did not unalive her ex-boyfriend. Yes, she said it, but it was a PR stunt, it was satire, it was not real life. Um, so for a lot of people saying that this was her death was retaliation for unalaving her ex-boyfriend, it's just not true. And I'm hoping that, you know, if you see this, you can spread it around because she was a very talented, very kind person. She wrapped at my wedding. You know, her and I were pretty close, and this is not something that, that she did. Again, it was PR. Uh, I just, you know, don't want her name associated with this, even though, yes, she did say it, but it, it wasn't real. It wasn't real, and you know, I'm wishing the best for her, for her family and friends. It's just, it's just tragic and unfortunate that she had to go, especially this way. Sometimes you really don't have a choice. Like I know females that never had a choice, and they was just dudes popping up and threatening the whole family, and you know, and you you know where people live. And I think about it, I'm like. You know where my loved ones live? You gotta go. <laughs> you, you got to go. Especially if you got the audacity to threaten them. What? You threaten my people? You always have a choice. Always. Whether good or bad, you always have a choice in every situation. But here's the problem, right? You always have freedom of choice. 
but you don't always have freedom of consequence. And what we fail to realize is there's a consequence behind every choice. There's a reaction to every action. She talking about dudes kicking in doors. That's because you dealing with dudes that kick in doors. That's because you deal with street ninjas. If you weren't dealing with a ninja in the street, you wouldn't have to worry about street consequences. It's the same thing I used to tell my daughter. This is the kind of character that you date. So these are the kind of responses that come with it. But no, all the girls want a thug because you see the money, you see the glitz, you see the glamour, you want a bag. But you don't stop to think about what comes with that bag. What is it going to cost you to chase these type of ninjas? Because a lot of these dudes are chasing these girls. These girls are chasing them. There was a period in time when dudes tried to keep girls out of street shit now they taking them along for the ride because this is the life they want they crave it when the dude said this is demonic absolutely you were so scared that you had to pull a trigger to get the ninja up off you but you weren't too scared to start making music about pulling that trigger taunting his family taunting his set taunting his homies like you bulletproof like you untouchable what are we doing See, this is what I mean when I say the devil will take you further than you want to go and keep you longer than you want to be kept. If you can even make it out because she didn't make it out of her decision. Her choices led her six feet deep because she wanted to play checkers with chess players. In chess, even though the king owns the board, you protect the queen so the queen can protect the king. But when the queen starts wanting to be the king, you mess up the game and that's how you get played when you don't have your offense and defense together because when you talk in the kind of talk that she was talking baby you better be able to back it up because somebody gonna try you if you claim a body you got to answer for that body whether you did it or not and there is no such thing as oh she really wasn't like that she really wasn't she was a good girl this was just for music promotion so you promoting on top of the body of somebody you unalive but want to claim you not like that not according to your interviews you can't talk like you got heat for heat and then get caught slipping that's why i said you got to keep your head on the swivel in this game in that game because somebody gonna test you to see if you are all barking no bite and if you're gonna play a street game your bite better be as big as your bark this is sad young life ain't even started yet you ain't even learned your capability you haven't even learned what you are capable of even doing yet but instead of using those gifts to empower you want to fall in line with the status quo because all the girls want to show just how hard they can be just how tough they are child and i watched the video the shooter walked past her people to go in that shop and shoot her how the hell is it that your people weren't paying attention you supposed to have watchers for your watchers for your watchers if you gonna talk a big talk they should have been watching for suspicious behavior not there to kick it they know your music they know what come with that so now you gotta start asking yourself if your people are really your ops did they help this dude accomplish this in broad daylight surrounded by a bunch of people when you play blood games you win blood prizes just like this next story this next story ain't no better it's not to be honest with you i don't know which one is worse this story is about this rapper out of Chicago named Lil Schoon. Now, I don't know much about Lil Schoon. The last time I tried to go on a journey down Chicago drill rap rabbit hole, I was scared to leave out my door and I didn't leave and I didn't live in Chicago. I realized a lot of these rappers, they're not rapping. <laughs> this ain't music. These are hit lists. These are execution lists done to music and a beat. But this young man was apparently unalived and then a video came came out showing that he was set up supposedly allegedly by this girl named Nene Brooks young girl who should be focused on her education who should be focused on accomplishing something in life leaving a legacy making her name known for something that generations after her could be proud of establishing her footing in this society in a positive way chasing her dream but instead her name is attached to this backdooring young men to be set up to be unalived 
not realizing that if it comes down to me or you, who do you think I'm going to choose? You think it's going to be you when my safety is at risk? You think these ninjas care enough about you not to put you in danger? No. Instead, they setting y'all up to go right on the front line because they feel like you would look less suspicious, except for the fact that the dudes are starting to catch on, that some of their greatest ops don't have a woodpecker. They have a putty tack. Man, let's get into this story. Check this out. Let's get into it. The girl who was accused of setting the school up, mom was killed hours after a video from a rain camera showing the school before his death today. She said, OMG, no, they killed my mom. I'm finna crash out. She also made fun of Lil TJ, who was shot and killed today, because he made a post yesterday saying, on vert soul, I would never let this bomb dirty bro eh be at my house talking about some hell. And she responded, watch who's next. Less than 24 hours, he was killed. Then she posted out there his death. I told y'all, watch who next. I look at little TJ with a laughing emoji. Her hour after her post, her mom was killed. Let's watch the video of Lil Schoon because I'm confused. In the video, it's not Nene Brooks, it's Journey. And we clearly hear her in the video ask him, why you didn't go to the back? He said, why would I go to the back? Then she said, we all gonna die. He said, what? Then she said, I'm just playing. Check it out. There's so much stuff wrong with this video. Number one, why are you so antsy? I can't trust anyone that's this antsy. I can't trust nobody that can't stay still. Because why are you antsy? Then you keep pacing around me. Why are you pacing around me? In circles. Over and over again. Why are you antsy? And who you talking to in this phone? Who you texting? And why are you talking to me about a back door? And talking about we all gonna die? There was too many clues in this little section. But see, this generation doesn't pay attention to clues. Because they think they're invincible. They think they're untouchable. I learned and teach my kids, you pay attention to everything going on around you. Because because what are we doing? Soon as she said, we all finna die? Yeah, I'm out. Adios. Arriva Derchi. Sayonara. I holla. Because what? And the simple fact that you mentioned a back door in this day and age? Baby, no. The door. Bye. No. Y'all better start paying attention to more than just what people say. You better start paying attention to actions and behaviors. And more importantly than that, pay attention to who you have around you. You better start checking your frenometer gauges because some of these people that you call your friends <laughs> those are your real ops after the video came out everyone started to point the finger at journey and she responded she said first off you dumb loose us at ass sound so slow why would he be scared to be around me this happened sunday right okay cool Friday night, I got off work, like 3.45. He came over. Where he come? Through my gate. Where he sleep safely and sound? My house, July 3rd and 4th. Where was I? His crib. Why ain't drop load in? June 20th and 21st. Where he was at? My crib, sleeping peacefully. Please tell me. Please tell me. I got hella days he been with me. Damn near every day. Why will I wait till my whole family home and he with his homies to do this? Why would school be scared to stand on my front porch, gang? Mine's not no Akinini. He didn't need to sneak there. No ski mask or it, cause he always there. So she's saying, look, the reason why I asked him why he ain't go to the back, because he always go to the back. She said he didn't have to sneak over her house. He wasn't at Nene's house. He was at her house. 
when all this went down. He said he good in the hood because he there all the time. He don't need no ski mask or nothing. He's there all the time. Why would Lil Schoon be scared to be around her? Mind you, the mom said 11 minutes before he was killed, he called her and told her, mom, they acting weird. So from the video that we seen, it was his homies and it was Journey. Now, some of y'all may be asking, where Nene Brooks come in at? After Lil Schoon was killed, text messages came out that was allegedly from Nene. She was speaking with the killer and it said, somebody asked, where you at? And she gave the address. He said, bet. Don't let nobody know you texted me. She said, now leave me alone. He said, is he there? She said, yeah. Finna get his hair done. Then leave. Then he said, who he with? Let me say this. It never showed who these messages was coming from. So I don't know if this actually Nene speaking. But once the text messages came out, everybody on Facebook was saying, oh, that's Nene. Because Nene, she put the little dashes before the words when she texts. Six, seven, eight people start saying this. Right then and there, it came out that Nene was headed to the airport to leave Chicago. She said once she get where she going, she was going to go live and tell everything. And that's when all hell broke loose. Why do some of y'all do this? That's my question. Social media is going to be the downfall of a civilization. Because y'all post everything on social media. If you go take a piss, you post that. You go to the store, you post that. You go in the fight, you post that. Your entire life is posted on social media. So if somebody wants to know how to get you and where, all they got to do is look at your social media account. Because some of y'all are so fame thirsty that you're willing to put your entire life on Front Street for a like, click, and a view. The world wasn't like this when we had Razor Phone and Pager, where you had to go to a pay phone to return the call of the page because we didn't have cell phones yet. But now everything is sensationalized on social media. You fighting with your ex, put that on social media. You get into it with your husband, put that on social media. Come on, y'all. get it. Give yourself a chance. She said, I'm going to be landing in a little. They took my other account. Add this one for now. I'm still going live tonight, 4 p.m. tomorrow. Then she said, getting situated. Just got in the house. I got real messages and videos, Journey, since you want to sit here and lie. Now, a lot of y'all might be like, well, how did Journey lie on Nene Brooks? Journey and Nene is friends. So all this took place at Journey House. I guess Lil Schoon was dating Journey. But Nene is Journey friend. So Schoon was there getting his hair done by his girlfriend or friend girl he was messing with at the time. Nene Brooks was just a friend that was there. And I guess she knew the ops and allegedly text the ops and told the ops he here finna get his hair done. But when all this stuff came out, Journey, which is Nene Brooks' friend, she reposted the text messages that was allegedly from Nene. So Nene saying, oh, you trying to make it seem like it was me? I'm finna really drop T. I'm finna drop text messages and real videos. Here's my question though, right? Because how would Journey have the text messages? She would have either had to get them from Nene or she would have had to get them from the ops that Nene was texting. So how did she get this information? See, y'all gotta watch Investigation Discovery so y'all can start asking the question. Put a, put a one in the chat if y'all feel like they both were in on this. Put a two in the chat if you think Nene was operating by herself. And when she said that, the next day she made a post and said, they killed my auntie. 
heartbroken emoji. After that, they created a monster. She said, watch who low, I drop now. And then, bullets went to flying, bodies start dropping. Couple bodies dropped today. And that's when she went and trolled Lil TJ. And she told everybody, I told y'all to watch who next. Four hours after that, and that's when she posted, OMG no, they killed my mom. I'm finna crash out. It was all good. So did this girl not have anybody in her life with some wisdom? You know, probably not, because grandmas these days is 22. Mamas are the same age as their kids, if not in age naturally, mentally, and emotionally. Who did she have in her life to tell her to shut the fuck up? You just talking and talking and talking on Beyonce's Enter of the Net and China's World Wide Web. You didn't think somebody was going to come see you? Oh no, I forgot, because she jumped up and left Chicago. So you didn't think somebody was going to come see your family? Did you even let your family know what you was into? And they need to watch their back? Get out the state? Get out the city? Did you warn anybody? Because now you've lost your auntie and your mama, but you still walking around breathing, talking shit on the internet, because you want to play hard. You want to play tough. You want to play street games with street ninjas. And your mama and your auntie had to pay the price for it. This is what the Bible means by, but fools despise wisdom. Because what she doing is foolish. All this yap yap on the internet is foolish. Because everybody ain't finna talk. And those who are coming and not finna talk, they could care less whether you're a woman or not. Because you're on their turf now. And all's fair in streets and war. Nothing's off limit, child. Until Nene said she was finna tell it all. And that's when bodies start dropping. Now, I don't know if Nene is responsible for Lil Schoon Duff. I have no idea. I don't know if them text messages is real. But on Facebook, Nene is claiming her innocence. But on Instagram, it look a little different. First, she made a post and said, y'all, why he just tell me to turn myself in? Atting FBG Butter. Now y'all already know Butter been going viral lately For being a rat So Butter <laughs> He gave us some good advice <laughs> He said Just turn yourself in gang You going to jail Then She posted Playing YNW Melly Blue Balenciagas She can't slime a slime But I don't know She might be more slime than me With laughing emoji and a peace sign. To me, it seems like she's starting to carry the title. She's starting to pretend or she's starting to admit that she slimed out Lil Schoon. And then she reposted the video of Lil Schoon standing on Journey Porch. She said, I was texting them niggas right there at the moment. Y'all see me? Crying emoji. Had to get them gone super fast. She's trolling for sure. Because that wasn't her in the video. That was Journey. So is she trying to say that Journey? The one that actually set Lil Schoon up? Because as we see, Journey do have a phone in her hand. Walking in circles around Lil Schoon. Y'all get in the comments and let me know what you think. Is the internet right? That Nene Brooks... The one that set up Lil Schoon? Or y'all think Journey was the one that set up Lil Schoon? Journey responds and show proof she didn't set him up.
So somehow y'all don't believe that your actions can put your family in danger. The street don't care about age. It no longer cares about sex. It doesn't care if you're elderly or in a crib. Your actions have consequences. Back in the day, they would purposely do something to your family to let you know they're not to be played with. So you could walk around with that on your conscience. That's what I mean by y'all trying to play a game you don't know nothing about. You don't know the rules of engagement. You don't even have the benefit of intellect. Because nobody's thinking. Nobody's stopping to think, could this action put my family in danger? My younger siblings. Matter of fact, will I walk out of this if I choose to take this route? It all sounds suspicious to me. From Journey to Nini, it's all suspicious. Because like I said, how would you have these text messages if you didn't get it from Nini and you didn't get it from the ops? How would you have them? You have to answer to the street for the street. If you claim a body in the street, whether you did it or not, they're coming for you. And anybody that gets caught up in the middle, well, it is what it is. That's how the street thinks. But when are these young ladies going to start choosing better? Start wanting start wanting better. Because this only ends you up one of two places. Jail or hell. Choose your struggle. But make sure you choose wisely. Because your life may depend on it. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this story. With Tan the God, Nene Leakes, Lord Lee, Nene Brooks, Lil Schoon, this new generation. The fact that everybody wants to be a thug. Drop in the comments and let me know what you think. Let's talk about it. If you enjoyed the video, consider hitting that like button. Join the Champagne Gang and the Fizz fam. Become a confidant. Hit that subscribe and notification bell so you'll be notified when we jump into whichever sector we jump into for another show. We'd love to have you. And if you're not sure just yet, don't worry about it. We'll leave the light on for you. Confidant, always remember. And I mean this with everything on the inside of me. If it doesn't cause you to elevate, it's causing you to depreciate. Now raise those glasses, clink, and let's drink till we meet again. Ta-da.